Hello, so here we have the lightning pattern that has been woven and is sitting on a block. Um, this is if you wanted to block your weaving, um, it's just an option. Um, this is something very new to me um, and I really like the effect. Um, I'm having this sit for a little, a little while. Um, I did steam it. And in the next video, I will show how to assemble this one. Isn't that going to be fun? So it's pinned. It had a little bit of steam, and now it's drying. Um, you have these little pins right here that are, are pulling it. And I have the ability to make it a little bit straighter. Um, so next video, we'll put this one together. This one hasn't been blocked, um, and it's, it's laying nice and flat. Um, you notice the corner kind of curves here. If I were to put it on the blocker, I'd be able to just pin it a, a little bit more square. So th those are just options um, if that's something you want to do with your weaving and your future weavings. Um, the blocking I'll do next. But for today, we're going to work on this lightning bag and what I did is I folded the paper in half so you have a fold that will be your material and then you want to lay your weaving right center and then do tracing and so you want to get a pencil and you could lightly trace you could go in between each of your fringe to make that pattern and then from there you have a pattern, you can cut this out, cut out the template, and then you have a template for your fabric. This fabric I'm using is wool, and I did bead the edging, and I beaded it one time down on the other side. Here's that fold, so we have a pocket here. I'm going to just do a nice little straight edge sewing following the line and I'm doing two rows of the sewing just to make it a little bit stronger we're going to fold it inside out and then sew it to our dance bag our lightning dance bag are you going to keep yours? Are you going to gift it for Christmas? I am using a beading needle, one of my beading needles, and I really like this beading thread because it's waxed. It's a little bit stronger. Um, here's the other one. So any of your thread, matching thread if you like, if you want to contrast. But this stitch is going to be a hidden stitch because we're going to turn, turn it in, inside out. Right now it's inside out and we're going to turn it the right way. I'm just going to continue all the way down. So I did that exact stitch on the other side and I went two times. If you feel like you want to make it three times, if you want to go a little bit um, closer to your stitch. Here I'm just creating a knot. sewn on both sides. This is the natural curve of the bag. So after we have sewn both sides, I double, I sewed it up and then down, up and then down. So I have two sewing sections. You can turn it inside out. 
You have an option if you would like. You can iron it. You can iron the crease. I'm okay with not ironing it. And I'm giving it a little fold, a little press. And then you take your beautiful weaving that you've done. And you want to flip it over. And I'm going to lay down your fringe. This is the fringe that I brought in. Um, so I'm just going to fold that over for now. Like so. I'm going to put the bag that I sewn together. I'm going to lay it right on. This is where you get a look at the edging a little. So I'm going to just fold this down. Did a little nice fold. And I'm going to put the bottom here. See if that's a good, good match. And put those fringe back in there because I'm going to sew this close at the bottom. I would like that set up at the bottom, so I'm just going to pin right there and right there, and we have the corners taken care of. And there's the sides. I'm going to do a pin on the sides as the top keeps opening. I'll work from the bottom up. Now, I'll look at the, the angle. And we want to fold down our liners. There's the top one. You could fold it, you could fold it over and look at, like, do you want it there? Or you could tuck it in either way. I think maybe I will fold mine over. My kitties might come over and investigate. He loves, he loves being in the weaving and the sewing. side down. Oh, kitty, kitty paws. And this is going to be um, sewn over with the bias tape. Bias tape is going to go over this, so that little edge is just to meet, meet up like so. I'm going to grab another one of these. You could use these pins or the little I love these little things. I use them for weaving and sewing. And now we're ready to sew this onto the bag. Exciting! So, next video, we're, we're going to sew down the, the sides because the top is going to need all of our extra attention. So I do have my beading needle and my beading thread, um, just working with little sections at a time. I'm going to work on one side, kind of collectively like do an evaluation, like make sure all your fringe is laying down. I'm going to start from the inside of the bag, that way the little knot isn't showing, like so. And you want most of the sewing to be going on top of the wool. And then I'm going to look at the front. And we have, we have the fringe knots. And then we also have in between. I'm going to go in between right there. And then what I'm going to do is pull that thread. I'm going to jump right next to the same level. See that? I'm going to go down because it's kind of hiding. There's going to you're going to see the open stitch on the back. I 
and so I came out from the next the next row and I'm jumping over by our fringe knots so I'm going to do that exact same stitch all the way down so I'm going to jump down to the next stitch coming from the back of the weaving and I'm going to jump over where those fringe knots are And as we get close to the different colors, I'm going to jump to the knots, the fringe knots. That way I can, can kind of control hiding my thread, making sure I'm not piercing that black. As we get, get closer to our fringe, we just want to kind of pop that out of the way. go down not to pierce the black or the yellow that's a great there we go sorry about that was not in the camera and next row by the fringe knot and I'm going so it's incorporating the side cords so we're sewing down the side cords right next to the fringe knot Oh, and there's a yellow, so I want to be very careful because we don't want the thread to show on the yellow weft. So I'm just going to go up a little to avoid the yellow. I'm going to work all the way down, all the way down to the bottom. So I have this double stitch going on on both sides of the edging and now I'm going to do the bottom um, if you decided to have your fringe on the outside and running down um, you can either keep the bottom open and do a smaller stitch but because I brought mine in I'm going to close that back up and the goal is to hide the stitch and there is um, our fringe twining right here um, so I'm going to follow that and I'm just going to go between first I'm going to start start it so I can hide my knot coming from the back to the front and then I'm going to go right by where the fringe twining is and I'm kind of going between softly between uh, my weaving I'm not grabbing any of the warp I'm just grabbing there's the fringe twining and then the last row I'm just kind of grabbing the back of them just softly sewing them together I'm not putting any pressure on the weft or the warp you could do two stitch per or one I'm doing two from the beginning and I'm not making my uh, stitches tight I'm not grabbing that so there's the, the stitch I'm going to put my needle through just a soft 
just a soft stitch right there. There's our weft. Just anchoring them together with really soft stitches. Now, if you were sewing or uh, putting two bags together, you would tie the fringe at the bottom to each other. If you had two bags that you're putting together. This is kind of the same concept, but instead of tying the fringe, long fringes together, we're just anchoring the back lining to our last stitching. I'm just going to do a little knot with the previous stitch, a little tiny knot, one more, then I'm going to go down and then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to, this is how I could take care of that. So now that there's no tail there, and I went through the fabric. There it is. A little pocket. This is going to be for the bias tape um, edging. If you're able to um, use uh, some fur or leather, we'll do that in the other um, bag that is now being blocked. So for the bias tape, this is a double fold, um, extra wide. And I was lucky enough to have some left over and I really liked this beautiful tan. Um, and I have some matching thread to go with it. I cut this bias tape at 15 inches and here's the double fold. It's just, it's done so beautiful. And there's a little crease right here. So I'm going to use that towards the end. So that will be in the back of the bag. This is the f um, side I'm going to use for the front. You unfold it and then you have another unfold to do. So you'll see one, two, three creases. The one in the middle is what's going to be the edge at the top. And um, what you want to do is you want to lay it down and then we're going to do the sewing at this crease. And then when we're done sewing, it folds over itself and then it goes to the back. So we are going to start. I have the pin holding it down and it's going over the warps and I thought I would just put this in there just to give it a nice little crease I'm going to fold it down I'm going to give it a, a little bit of room to go around that corner 
And my goal is to sew it down right at that section of our warp. So it's going to be a very slow process. And I could pin it, but I really want to look at it warp by warp. Here's my thread and needle. I'm going to start right at that crease and come from the front to the back. And here I'm going to just do a really close up on that stitch. And we're going to travel our thread and needle at this crease. So this is where we'll have the biggest um, stitch just to give this a little opportunity to be hidden. Kind of overlapping my stitches. I'm going to take a peek if I'm on track. That's nice. It's over those stitch, the first two. This one I am sewing a little tighter than I did with the pocket we just sewn down, kind of securing each stitch. So we'll continue doing this all the way around. really close to where we're coming back on the inside. The traveling of the needle is happening in the front. And you want to keep an eye that you're really close to your edge of your warp. Don't continue all the way around. Here I've sewn the bias tape all the way to the edging from where we began and then here's the ending and I like to have them meet side by side and I trim them and what I'm doing is sewing them together so if you lay them flat and you want some allowance for it to flip over I'm just giving it a nice little sewing at the ends. I have, I still need to finish the corner, so this corner, I haven't turned this corner at the beginning yet. just wanted to take care of the bias tape. You might find yourself giving a little bit allowance, merging these ends together, and then also giving it a Nice little crease. I gotta unfold all parts of the bias tape to fold the so the beginning and the end together is one. Just doing a nice little stitch at the edge. You can do one row or you can do two as you follow that same edging.
now the front or the beginning and the end are one. Whoops. So we did the, the sewing of the bias tape on the edge and I tried to get as close to the weaving as I could <laughs> and this is the fun part we get to open up that bias tape and give it a nice stretch. The goal is to keep this fold so it has that nice crease and then you want to stretch it and turn it and clip clip like so. We want to do that all the way around. I'm changing from thick to thin so it's going to have a little section right here that is going to be a little bit a little bit more extra time to turn that over and go to the Turn it down. If you have pins, you could pin it like so. And there's the thick front part. right there and now now we carefully sew down our bias tape to the liner so you want to use your brown thread or your black thread whatever thread um, that matches your bias tape that you got from a clay or at Joann's or that's been in your sewing kit so now you want to take this part and you want to sew that down. So we finished sewing the front part of the bias tape um, using the matching thread and then I have it folded over and the goal is to stitch this to the um, inside of the bag and then the, also the out the inside of the warp so we don't want to pierce in the front we want to make sure our stitches are happening just right at this location I did tie a knot and so my goal is to hide as much stitches as I can and incorporate the back of the bag and I, I do feel a little bit of um, sewing through the warp and so there's one stitch and I'm gonna tighten this down and follow the bias tape from the back and we come out and this is where we're going to do another stitch and incorporate following the bias tape kind of going through that fold where the fold is and pull that down it's going to get a stitch right here with the liner big liner and a little bit of the weft part not too much this thread isn't wax so it's getting a little knotty there there we go and we pull that down trying to follow the line of the first bias sewing of the front there's that if you see it right there it doesn't always work out that way that's a nice little goal. Follow 
following that bias crease sewing the liner up to the stitch of the bias tape securing that stitch I'm going to do this stitch all the way around inside the bag I really like the edging of this bias tape. I love that color with it. Um, kind of a buckskin. It's pretty. Um, so we um, sewed it to the front and the back. There's the pocket and the edges and there's that connecting part that we worked on. Um, for the strap, there is some thigh spinning videos that you're more than welcome to look at if you want to do some thigh spinning and make your warp out of some of your thigh spinning. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can use some of your weft and you can grab segments of three and figure out the length that you want and um, braid three sets. And then with those three sets, you can braid those and you'll get a nice thick um, strap. So here is the um, warp that we spun this summer in the class, um, the Z twist, and it's up, up next to this warp. You can see the difference between the Z twist and the S twist. Um, they're pretty comparable on size. The um, Z twist was really fun to do. I grabbed um, three to braid with um, two yards each, a total of six yards of the three. So each um, part of the weaving was two yards. And with the three, we needed six yards. And I made them um, 74 inches. Um, the strap turned out to be 32 inches. So here is a, it's so pretty. That's really beautiful. Really beautiful. And with that, the ends are six inch fringe. I thought that would be a really nice um, accent. There's, so we can grab our bag and we could use the back and figure out like you can see where you like the length and where you would like it to be sewn on and I was thinking that maybe halfway that's where I was going to have the knot and then I'm going to have it from here I'm going to sew it from here to here So here I am sewing down our strap that we had braided with two yards um, each section of thigh spun Z twist warp. So a total of six yards was needed. And we have this beautiful fringe that's about six inches. And I'm just kind of looking at the bag and wondering, like, should I have it sewn from here? You can have the knot come all the way down here and sew all the edging. But I think I'm just going to go halfway. Um, and then this little fringe could be in the back. I did end up following the edge of what I sewn down. Um, and then we're not going to incorporate any of the weaving so I have the weaving kind of tucked aside and we're just gonna sew it onto the bag itself so I'm going to come from the back to hide my knot and because I have white thread I don't really want to go onto the strap of our bias tape so I could um, go down the middle or I can crisscross on the warp, meaning come down, grab the part of the bag, and kind of go up to where the thread comes from the back. And then as you can see, it kind of secured, secured that side down. Then I could go to the other side. I could either skip 
and, and so here so it's kind of blending into the the actual braid itself I'm coming up try not to pierce I'm catching everything on the way so now we're at that same spot I'm going to come to the back and this is where I'm going to move the working needle and then we go down to the next one which is right here and I'm going to go down right down next to that braid I'm going to come back where we started in the middle of that braid there we go and I'm going to jump onto the next mm -hmm. side I'm going to start right in the middle. I do have a sewn down, so I'm going to move that. Here's the back of our dance bag with the bias tape and we have this sewn down with some pretty fringe going down. Um, here is the front of our dance bag. Such a beautiful option to be able to have that bias tape and use some weft or warp for our strap. Um, there's also other options if you wanted to use fur or if you wanted to use leather. You could cut the leather in a beautiful um, uh, pattern and sew it down and do hole punch and uh, sew your leather on that way. I've seen that been done. One of my favorites is getting like ermine and sewing down and having it fold over. That would be really pretty. If you have an ermine then you could have the tail go down. Um, you can cut the ermine in half so you can sew it on both sides. So there it is.